to a blessing. And the second prog progression is more complicated. It has three, three parts. From a problem to be solved, to a person to be valued, to a purpose to be lived out. So looking at Galatians, we're going to look at that transition of a babysitter to a blessing. And Paul is talking about how, not this Paul, the Apostle mm -hmm. Paul, is talking about how because of Christ, because of the work of the Spirit, we're no longer left with a babysitter. And that's one good translation, actually, for the word that's listed as disciplinarian in our reading for today. Because basically there's a time when the kids are not ready to be responsible, they're not ready to enter into their inheritance, they just sort of need to be taken care of. So that's the context. So what Paul writes is, and not this Paul, the Apostle Paul. <laughs> now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guard, guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian, or babysitter, until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we no longer are subject to a disciplinarian, or babysitter. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. I think that word children might be confusing because we think of children needing babysitters, but actually that Greek has several different words for children at every stage of development. So this is the word weoi, which means sons, adult sons and daughters. Oh. So through Christ, we are no longer little children who need a babysitter, but through Christ we are now adult sons and daughters who have entered into the inheritance who don't need a babysitter anymore but we actually are ready for the blessing of our Father to join them in the family business of the kingdom of God. So Paul is saying that, yeah, maybe at the beginning of our walk, we need a babysitter. We, may, we enter into the Christian life not knowing the difference between right and wrong. We tend to hurt ourselves. We tend to hurt each other. And maybe for a while, we need to have that accountability. We need to have that ex exterior motivation of the law to tell us what to do. But as kids grow up, do kids eventually get to the place where they need to move from a babysitter to the blessing of their parents? Yeah, if they're being raised correctly. I know Nathan still needs a babysitter, but Andrew and Peter are doing okay. Yeah. Uh, just kidding. Um, but basically the whole point is that early on, they're going to need some accountability. They're going to need someone from the outside telling them what to do. But the whole point of growing up is to get to the place where you develop your own character, your own discipline, your own love, your own sense of who you are, so that you'll still do the things that the law tells you to do, but you're not doing it because someone's forcing you to do it, you're doing it because that's who you are. So Paul is saying that in Christ, we are not someone who's going to need a babysitter our whole life, but we are people who will experience the heart of our Father, the mind of our Father. We will develop our own identity as sons and daughters of God. And at that point, the motivation for our Christian life doesn't become exterior rules, but an interior blessing of the Father saying, you are my son, you're my daughter. Now go out there and take risks and use your gifts. So I just want to invite you to look at where are you in that journey? Do you come to church for a babysitter to tell you what to do to keep you out of trouble? Or are you in a place where you are seeking to understand and experience the heart of the Father, the love of the Father, so that you're not needing a babysitter, but ultimately you want to become an adult in your faith, someone who actually is focused on, out of the love of the Father, being a blessing to the world, rather than just someone who needs to have a babysitter to get them out of trouble. So I invite you to see where you're at in that journey and invite Jesus to draw you further from that babysitter to blessing. The second is the reading from Luke, and this is the complicated three-part one. So it's, we go from a problem to be solved, to a person to be valued, to a, a, a purpose to be lived out. So a problem to person to purpose. And in the reading from Luke, we have Jesus and his disciples crossing over from Galilee, which is where they did most of their ministry, across the Sea of Galilee, to the other side, to the land of the Gerasenes. And when they got to the land of the Gerasenes, who was the welcoming committee? A crazy demon-possessed guy. But it, for me, it's interesting to see what happens. Is When Jesus shows up, you think, if anything, if God is holy, if Jesus is God, the demon-possessed guy should run the other direction. But there's something about Jesus that people who are really broken are not repelled by him, but they're attracted to him. Because somehow they know that he's the solution to their problem. 
So this man is attracted to Jesus. And this man has not been treated well by the people of the land of the Gerasenes. What was his role in society? He was the problem to be solved. He was the guy who needed to be kept away from the children and the cats and the dogs. He's the one that they needed to keep throwing clothes on. They needed to keep on chaining him up and locking him away. He was a problem to be solved until Jesus showed up. And when Jesus started to work in his life, did he remain a problem to be solved? No, Jesus had a whole different perspective. He was looking at this man and saying, you know what? These voices, they're not you. These compulsive activities, they're not you. This behavior, that's not you. Let's get rid of all that junk and discover who you are. So he casts all of these demonic, oppressive things out of the man. And then, who's left in front of him? A problem to be solved? No, what's left in front of him is a purpose, a person to be valued. So, and this man is transformed because Jesus looks at him in a different way. As he sees Jesus looking at him, he's saying, you know what, I feel different. I, I, I don't feel like I've ever felt before. Because now I feel like a person, someone of value. And so it's kind of tempting to just stay there. Okay, I'm no longer a problem to be solved. Now I'm a purpose to be valued. And now Jesus, can I just go with you? Because life in this land hasn't very, been very good because they just see me as a problem. Now what does Jesus say to the man? Okay, now you see yourself as a person rather than a problem. But the solution is not to just get away from everything. But the solution is now to be who you are, where you are. So now it's time to discover your purpose. Your purpose isn't just to come with me. Your purpose is to actually be where you are, to be a testimony to the people of your land. That whenever they look at you, they're going to be reminded of the power of God to change lives. And they're going to be invited to start seeing you not as a problem to be solved, but as a person to be valued. And it's going to make them wonder. So it's interesting because next time Jesus goes back to this territory, there's a whole crowd waiting to hear him. You think maybe this man was a pretty good missionary yeah. in his testimony of how Jesus had changed his life. So as you come to church, I invite you to be thinking, where are you in this journey? Are you a problem to be solved? Is that why you come to church every Sunday? Are you a person that's learning to be valued? Is that a reason you come to church every Sunday? Or... Are you discovering you have a purpose to be a blessing to others? Because all of those are part of the Christian journey. It's just we don't want to stay stuck in the problem to be solved. Because as we experience Jesus, as we experience the work of the Spirit, we're no longer a problem to be solved. We're a person of value who will discover that we have a purpose to live out in the world. So as the Gideons, just to pull this all together, as the Gideons are going around and praying for people and passing out God's Word, I think sometimes we think, well, we've got to go to those heathen, pagan people because they need a babysitter to straighten them out because they're doing all these bad things. It's just that when that babysitter of the law gets revealed along with Jesus, it doesn't leave them with a babysitter. It invites them to someone who shows them that they're a son or a daughter. So that, that God's word brings us from, yeah, maybe at the beginning, these people that don't know Jesus need to have a babysitter a couple months ago. But the Word just brings us into the place where we become adults who are transformed by the blessing and love of God and not just the exterior motivation of the law. But also as God's Word gets a hold of people, we think, well, we need to give the Bible to these people because they are a major problem to be solved. But the thing is that when the, when the Bible, when the Jesus of the Bible gets access to someone, they don't stay a problem to be solved very long because they start to experience the love of Jesus and they start to see that they're a person to be valued. And when they discover they're a person to be valued, they don't remain someone who's just focused on, gee, I'm a nice person. They start to see, but my life has a purpose. So when God's Word gets a hold of people, that transition happens. And I just want to invite us as a church to be focused on, we want to bring people all the way through the journey. We don't want to just give them a babysitter to tell them what to do, but to give them a blessing to learn what it means to be a son or daughter of God. And we don't want to leave people who come to church because you're a problem to be solved. But we want to invite them to a Jesus who shows them who they are, a son or daughter of God, and shows them that their life is about more than just stopping being a problem, but it's about being a blessing, having purpose in the world. So 
my blessings to you today. If you need a babysitter, great, but don't stay there. And if you need to have someone fix you because of your problem, Jesus can do that. But that's not going to be your ongoing identity. Amen. Amen.